Hi there, welcome to this Liquibase instructional video. Today we're going to be talking about using SQL file change sets in the tool. So we're going to cover what is a SQL file change set, how do you use the change set wizard to add a SQL file change set, walk through the basic steps of performing that task, and then we'll do an example in an actual running instance of the product. Now before we get too far into things, it probably serves to review what is a change set in the first place. Now in Liquibase terms, a change set simply is a artifact inside a larger change log that defines a set of operations that will be executed against a target database. And every change set is equivalent to one or more SQL statements. Now a SQL file change set is, a, is one of the types of change sets that are supported by the tool and its job is to simply encapsulate your SQL, just a, a SQL file that you give to it, and pass that SQL file to your database engine's native tool. It retains all of the same liquid-based management capabilities around the change, so you can manage it with all the granularity and control of any type of change set within liquid-based, but it is just passing through the SQL file as you specified. It's effectively uh, uh, transparent exercise. The important thing to remember is that while we have a very large number of change set types available for uh, the liquid-based products, the uh, enterprise tool in particular has the full set. The SQL file change set is the only type of change set available in the liquid-based business edition. Okay, so let's take a look at how you actually do this, how you actually use this uh, functionality. So from within the Liquibase GUI, you will launch the change set wizard using the add a change set button on the uh, left middle of the display, just to the left of the status display. Choose the type of change set, the one that's appropriate for your database engine. So if you're using Oracle, it's SQL Plus, SQL Server, it's SQL Command, or Postgres, it's PGSQL, that sort of thing. You're going to pick your SQL file, go through the summarization process, and just to be clear, while the change set wizard does allow you to choose more than one file to create your change set, you can actually kind of stack a set of files. That's bad practice because you lose granularity of control. You end up with so much stuff in one change and then if you need to modify that or, or uh, roll it back or something like that, you're, you're moving more changes than you have to. Remember that a key principle of DevOps and Lean is small batch processing, the smallest change possible so that it's easy to control, it's easy to troubleshoot, it's easy to modify should you need to do that. So best practice, small number of changes in the SQL file, ideally one, and only one SQL file as you move it through. Okay, so once you've got the file in and identified, you're going to go ahead and click the finalize button. This is where you have to put some metadata around the uh, change set. Right? You have, every change set has to have an ID and every change set has to have an author. And of course, as you've seen in other videos or, or probably learned by this point, you can apply labels to the change set to control when and where it goes to which database at what time and based on how you want to control the deployment. There's other stuff you can do here too, and we're going to talk about that in, in a, another video. But just for the basic task of getting a uh, SQL file change set into the system. You really only need to put the author and ID in. Labels are important, but technically uh, unnecessary for this for this task. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and, and jump into the uh, demo environment. Actually, walk through adding a SQL file to a real uh, real change log. Okay, so here we are in our demo environment, and we're gonna walk through adding that SQL file change set to this uh, environment. Now, as we talked about, simple process. We wanna launch the change set wizard by clicking our the add a change set button just to the left of our display. 
And again, here's the full list of change set types available or that you can create using the change set wizard. We're just interested in the SQL file ones here today. Again, that's the only type available in Liquibase business. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click SQL command. This environment has a SQL Server database in it. So we need to use SQL command. Click next. We're going to choose our file. I've got my sample files over here on my desktop. Pick one. Click next. Select uh, review the summary here again. Best practice is smallest number of changes possible per change set so that you maximize your ability to track, granularly troubleshoot, and control a change moving through the system. We're going to go ahead and click Finalize and populate the metadata. So each change set has to have an ID. It also has to have a author associated with it. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a label for it as well to better better track it and and uh, sort of sort of uh, identify it as we move things along. That information published, we're not going to get into the advanced settings uh, in this video, uh, so we can go ahead and just click finish. It's going to bring that change set into our change log. So when I refresh my pipeline status here, it's going to show that I now have undeployed changes. And as you'll recall, I can click on the undeployed changes link here, go see my list of, fully, of deployed change sets in my change log, as well as the ones that are undeployed. And here's the one we just created. Should I want to deploy that? I can now deploy this with options. Uh, this is for just the first pipeline in the environment. We'll go ahead and select that. Uh, it's part of the reason I associated a, a label with it is an environment specific thing. Your labels will be different and we can talk about uh, label strategies at another time. So I've chosen this. I want all the changes associated with pipeline one to go. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. It's going to run and that change will now be deployed in my first environment and be pending for the rest of them. As with any deploy in Liquibase, I get a nice Report tells me what was done, gives me an update on the specific SQL that was executed and what the output of the command was as it, uh, as it was executed. So I get all of that information in a nice single place. And that is the basic process of adding a SQL file change set to my change log and deploying it into an environment. I can deploy that to change set to any of my environments as would make sense or as I was trying to progress it through the pipeline, of course, and uh, go on from there. In future videos, we're going to explore some of the more advanced topics and some of the better ways, uh, perhaps, and more creative ways that you can apply the metadata to manage and control this change, these type of change as you, as you expand your ability and capability with Liquibase. Thank you for watching this Liquibase educational video. We certainly hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions or need any more information, please feel free to reach out to us through our website or various social media outlets. Thanks again. Have a good day.